Okay, so hear me out. As part of the Terrible Tyranny collection, I need to find things that look or are tangentially related to Tyranids. Tyranids look like reptiles, and the whole of the Pokemon starter lineup in Generation 1 are all reptiles. This isn't something that I had really thought about until starting this project, and I thought it was really cool, and how funny would it be if I made three Pokemon themed Tyranids. So here we go. I'm going to do three Tyranids, one for Squirtle, one for Bulbasaur, one for Charmander, and we're going to see where it goes. Now don't worry, I'm not going to say that these guys are exactly the same, because quite clearly they're not, but I'm going to use this as an excuse to work on something that I don't normally do. Behind me is a big packet of green stuff world's green stuff, and I barely use it. I use it mostly for basing and repairing things that I break, but I've never really used it for custom uh, or kit bashing. I'm going to try and make these a little bit more like their Pokemon counterparts by using some of this green stuff. Now I can tell straight away that maybe this stuff has been left a little too long. It's quite stiff and it's full of kind of like hard bits, which means this probably isn't going to be the best stuff in the world for this kind of thing. But it still should get the job done, it's just going to take twice as long to mix it in my hands like this. Now the first Pokemon up is Charmander, and there's not really much I actually want to do to this guy other than a little bit of a fire on the back of his tail. Just shape wise he kind of matches that of like a Termagon, obviously uh, minus the second set of arms, but he kind of has that lizard like shape, which means a little bit of fire on the tail should look funny, mainly funny, um, but it should look kind of cool. And making the fire is actually really easy. All I'm going to do is kind of roll it into a cylinder and then poke it on the end. And now, because it's such like a, a thick material, I'm just going to pinch it between my fingers in like alternating directions. I do have these little tools, I'm going to use them to make sure that it's like attached to the tail. Um, they're not really surfaces that kind of like connect, especially since it's been primed. Um, it, it wiggled around until it kind of went hard and then... Yeah, I regret saying that as well. Yeah. Anyway, the fire was probably the easiest one of the three. Uh, just a, a thing on the end of the tail is... Yeah, is pretty easy, all things considered. Now, this is the next one. This is Bulbasaur. And the main kind of hurdle to get with these guys was that I have to kind of hide some of the details. This kind of dictates how big the things like Bulbasaur's bulb and Squirtle's shell has to be in order f to kind of cover everything. Now retroactively I probably could have just cut those details off to make the size of the thing slightly smaller, but Honestly, I think they were kind of matched in their size. I'm pretty happy with how they, they turned out. Now, I'm not gonna lie, like both Bulbasaur and Squirtle were just a lot of fumbling around. This is what Bulbasaur looks like, and we're gonna be moving on to Squirtle. Now, Squirtle is kind of like, I have more of an idea of how I think I'm gonna do this one. It's basically just make one giant round ball and then I can work on it from then. Now trying to get those hexagonal scales onto it was kind of difficult, but I've got all these shaping tools so I was just making like little cuts in between each of them to try and get those kind of hexagonal marks on them. It's not the easiest thing to do, especially on a round shape, but I got it to a point where I thought it looked kind of, kind of alright. I know that I can change it a little bit when it hardens because I've got some tools to kind of help with that but yeah there's not a lot I can do right now. Now I've used all of the green stuff I actually need to for this project so I'm gonna get all of the green stuff that I haven't got a use for and put it on this base. Now I said that I've used it in the past for basing so this is just my way of not wasting any of it. 
and kind of help make something look more interesting in the future. It's now been 24 hours and everything's hard now, so I can continue working on it with a little Dremel. Now, in its current state, it still needs a lot of work. It's covered in little crease marks from where I can't blend it properly and also like fingerprints and it's only just kind of roughly in its shape. It doesn't look great right now, but I can make it look better with the help of a Dremel just to kind of smooth out all of the edges and help push the shape in the direction that I actually wanted to go. Now, sanding down all of this green stuff did make for quite a mess. Absolutely coated my entire workspace in this fine green dust, but I was wearing a mask to make sure I didn't inhale any of it. Just wanted to make sure you knew that. The fire is looking good though. I'm much happier with the way that it's shaped right now than when I did it with just my hands. I think the Dremel is really going to help the other two as well, as I'm not a big fan of how they currently look. It's now time for Bulbasaur to get the sanding treatment, and this one has the most brush marks that are left in the current model. I really need to make sure that they don't show up on the final design, so I've got to do actually a lot of sanding. Upon sanding this, I realized just how much the the kind of green stuff is kind of outdated. There's loads of chunks of hardened yellow green stuff in amongst all of this. Um, it is sufficiently hard, which is quite nice, but it doesn't stop it from being an absolute pain. Um, as you can see, I'm not sure if you just noticed, uh, I, I dropped it on the floor. Um, and I'm going to have to reattach it, its leg. Um, one of the unfortunate things with using kind of like a blue tack as a, as a fastening solution, uh, occasionally you just kind of knock it off and it goes flying. Um, oops. Now, when it came to the Squirtle, I found using this like triangular nib significantly better due to its straightened edge that also helped kind of like bevel in each of the kind of hexagons that are on the design. And after all of that we finally made it to the point where we can start painting them. Now these designs are going to be slightly more cartoonish in nature. They're going to be super bright and vibrant and hopefully they'll look a little bit more cartoony than what a normal paint job of a Tyranid normally looks like. So hopefully they'll look pretty cool and unique. So first up is Charmander. Now I realise that I've got to paint him bright orange and orange paints are never particularly good. We're talking kind of like a, a minimum of two layers probably gonna be more just because bright orange really doesn't work that well um yeah I, i'm not sure i would have done charmander if i had thought of that before starting so this is gonna be quite quite the slog um it looks all right though um i dry brush it with kind of like a, a mix of the orange with some pale yellow probably used a little too much pale yellow but we're gonna fix that with some wash now I've got some contrast paints uh, some speed paints they're all really nice oranges so I kind of make like the highest saturation whilst also kind of like diluting it enough to make it look like an actual wash in order to kind of keep some sort of shadowiness I also grab some Gravelord Grey and I kind of dilute that in around kind of the chitinous material just to help provide shadows because you don't really get like a shadowy effect when you use like a super bright vibrant wash. So this is a good way of like counteracting that by making those kind of like shell bits like shadowy. And those shell bits we're going to paint with this contrast paint. Now, this is one of the few contrast paints I actually own. I tend not to use contrast paints that often, mostly because I like to mix and make my own colours. It's pretty hard to do that with a non-dropper bottle, so I only really ever use these contrasts when I want to use that paint colour specifically. 
Thankfully, this color is really close to Charmander, right? So I've themed the skin mostly around kind of Charmander's belly skin, but I want that kind of bright saturated orange to be his kind of uh, shell material. And so I'm going to use this paint that I've, I've, I've almost never used, to be honest. However, it went on really, really well. I'm super impressed with it. Um, I only did like one layer and it's covered in messy kind of over paint from the, the skin. And it just went over that and you can't even tell, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, typically I, I tend to use my speed paints more as washes than actual speed paint these days. Um, so I'm probably not going to use this paint that much, but I'm super happy with how it's turned out. I now need to paint all of the green stuff. I've primed it white, but I'm also going to put a titanium white over the top of it. Now I've noticed that my titanium white is actually starting to get really thick. And that's because uh, it's almost out. This is going to be like my first like proper bottle of paint that I've uh, completely used up almost. Um, which is a little bit interesting. But yeah, I had to, I had to brush primer it. Uh, th this is simply because I, well, I can't spray it, it's already partly painted. Now, if I had thought of that beforehand, I probably would have done the green stuff and then primed it. And yeah, I can't help but drop things on the floor apparently. Now, when it comes to making the fire, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna blend it on the brush by mixing together the red, the orange, and the yellow to make kind of a cartoony-esque fire. Now, I may have jumped the gun a little bit because the white underneath wasn't fully set, kind of blending everything together. So instead of having like a deep red, I now have a pink. Instead of having an orange, I now have kind of like a peachy color. And the yellow is now also like a bright orange as well. And I can't add enough yellow to kind of get away from it. So I'm gonna have to let this one dry and then go at it again. Uh, in order to do kind of like a second pass to make it look better. This time I'll actually make sure that it's dry before I'll move on to the second layer. A second go at the fire has really helped now. You can tell that the blending just looks a lot better when you do it properly instead of rushing things. And yeah, I'm super happy with how the, the fire looks. I know it's kind of a little bit of like a cartoony style fire that typically fire doesn't start red and then go yellow at the top but it I it, it it's satisfying it looks satisfying I quite like it I go through a super similar process with Bulbasaur by making kind of like a dark green fade into a light green hopefully trying to end up with some yellowy tones up the very top but I'm happy with it just being dark into light green I think that's gonna look quite nice on it even though that's not really part of like the design of Bulbasaur Typically it's like a one color, but I, I think it'll look better with a gradient. The Squirtle model is going to be really straightforward. I've basically just got to paint it brown. I'm going to dry brush it, and then I might even do just a little bit of a wash so that you can get a little bit of contrast in between all of the different hexagons. And that's going to be pretty much the whole of like the Squirtle shell done. He has like a bright white um, rim around it anyway, so I don't even really need to do much to that. And he'll look good, to be honest. Now, when it comes to these two, getting the colors right is going to be super important to making them look like what they're supposed to. Because both of them are in kind of that blue spectrum, I've got to make sure that they don't look the same. So I'm going to split this by doing one as a faded ultramarine and the other one as a turquoise to really kind of bring out the difference between the two of them. I can immediately tell that I've got the right colours because they're starting to look a lot like what they're supposed to be themed around. Already with just this one layer of paint on them, I think I've absolutely nailed it and I'm happy with these colours that I've chosen. But we're not done yet because I need to put a wash over these to make them look just a little bit more detailed. For the Squirtle, I'm going to be do using a mixture of the, oh, what's the name of the blue? I think it's like High Lord Blue or something and Pastel Seafoam. 
just like the tiniest drop of both of these because of how strong both of the colors can be it's quite literally just the tiniest bit of shade i don't want to change the color that much because i really like how it looks currently it just needs a bit of depth to it so you can see me just taking the tiniest bit off the end of this high whatever uh, high, i can't i can't read the little preview oh anyway it looks really really cool um i think it ends like in a really good effect i'm pretty happy that i didn't use too strong of a wash for this uh to keep that kind of color that i already really like now for the bulbasaur i just used the pastel seafoam super wash down and I, I genuinely feel like it did nothing uh looking at it now it looks almost exactly the same um yeah not not the best version um, of a of a really light wash. Uh, I didn't really know what was gonna happen So this was my way of kind of like trying to find out But once again, I was doing it quite gingerly because I didn't want to ruin the color that was already there So I'm not too grumpy that it didn't do anything Because I would rather it did nothing than mess the whole thing up Now out of fear of kind of doing anything wrong I didn't really want to do dry brushing on the skin just in case I kind of ruin things, especially since I've already done the shell. So I do a light bit of glazing instead, just to kind of bring out some of the highlights. All that we have left now is the little tiny details. So the way I wanted to do the claws as if they were doing different kind of moves, it's very easy to be like, oh, the Bulbasaur is doing a uh, vine whip. So I, I painted the claws bright green. I also kind of painted the toenails green as well. That's just because I didn't really know what else to do there, kind of like hoof-like effect. Um, and when it comes to the Squirtle, I didn't really know what to do. So I've just kind of, I, I painted them dark blue. Um, he's doing, I don't know, Hydro Cannon or something. It doesn't really make any sense. Um, but the, the, the Bulbasaur makes more sense. Uh, yep. And then when it comes to the Charmander, you might have noticed that I kind of painted it with the same fiery effects, the gun. So he's kind of doing flamethrower. Um, that one's even more of a stretch than Hydro Cannon, to be honest. But, you know, it's better than Bubble Beam. And before we go into the reveal, I just want to stop and say, hey, if you've enjoyed the video, please stick around. Click the subscribe button. Apparently, I need 100 in order to, like actually start showing up in people's feeds and things so i have no idea where you're coming from but hey if you enjoyed the video feel, feel free to stick around um leave a comment press the like button all of those lovely things um yes please help me it'll help i swear and these are the final designs i'm super happy with how these guys look it's such a, a, a weird concept to do these Pokemon themed Tyranids, especially modifying them to make them look a little bit more. I think the Squirtle Tyranid looks uh, absolutely insane and I love him. I think I, the, the Charmander one as well, like the fire on the tail is really fun. I The, the Bulbasaur one probably could have done with more work, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't feeling him. Uh, not as much as the other two I guess. Um, but yeah, no, these guys are super fun and vibrant and I think they're going to really stand out when they look at all of the designs that I've painted so far. These three are going to be the ones that like people pick up and go, what, what the hell is this? And that's the exact vibe that I'm going for with the Terrible Tyranid collection. So it's perfect. Now the Charmander looks really, really cool. I'm super happy with both the uh, kind of the shell and the skin. I decided not to dry brush the shell. Uh, I think that's because I'm compensating for how much I dry brushed the skin and decided I didn't like it. Uh, so I just didn't dry brush it. Um, that's probably the one thing that I would probably change. But yeah, it's kind of like whenever you mess up, you're like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do it again, just in case I mess it up again. Um, I'm super happy with how the fire looks. I know it's kind of like a cartoonish style design. Um, but I think it's kind of perfect for this. Um, and I think as a model, like it's just a fun looking model. Um, I, I super enjoyed making this one. I think just cause this one was more straightforward than the others. 
that I prefer doing this one over the other two. Now, I can't help but feel like maybe it's a little bit poetic that uh, the Bulbasaur kind of got left to the side. I, uh, he, he needs another coat over the bulb, and he, he needs repainting really. Um, it just, it, it wasn't doing it. Um, I, I'm just, I just preferred doing the other two to be honest. The, the bulb itself is like a pretty complicated shape. So when it wasn't really looking like the right shape and I, sanding wasn't really helping, I kind of just like lost heart on this. Um, yeah, yeah, no, out, out of the three, he's definitely the weakest. But I, I, I really enjoyed the colors. I think the teal was the perfect color for the skin. And the the green to kind of like the light yellow was, was a good choice, even if it isn't fully visualized in this kind of design. Um, it definitely adds to like the visual variety, but it's yeah no the the design isn't it chief. I'm I'm sorry. I I really like this Squirtle. I think this is the one where like the joke lands right. Like the whole point of this is that it's funny. I think this is the first one that you kind of would go and be like, oh, that one's a Squirtle, right? The others take a little bit more like of a sales pitch to be like, hey look, it's Charizard. Uh, sorry, not Charizard. Hey, look, it's Charmander. Um, maybe I should do the flying one as Charizard. Oh, I haven't decided what to do the flying one as yet. I think, I think I might do that. Anyway, Squirtle's looking really cool. I'm really happy with how the shell came out. But it was pretty daunting to get those kind of hexagonal things on. I think I just accepted that they weren't going to look perfect. And in a way, that kind of adds to the charm of them. The kind of like dry brushing as well really kind of like helps bring out those shapes. I'm super happy with the choices that I made even though I wasn't really confident at the time. And yeah, no, uh, this guy, I absolutely love him. The only criticism I would probably do is that maybe the claws should have been a different color. It just would have like made them look... They would stand out against the skin, right now they don't really stand out. And that's the Terrible Tyranny collection for this week, I guess. Um, I super enjoyed making these ones. Um, it felt like a lot less pressure, um, as well as being able to kind of like work on something that I haven't really done before. I, with the the ones that I've been doing, like I, I, I felt like I've just been kind of like freehanding it. Like I already knew like the processes that I was doing. With these guys, it's been like uh, a new experience to kind of work with the green stuff in a completely different way. And that's been super refreshing. Now, there's not actually that many Tyranids in the box left, which is uh, a little bit of a sigh of relief. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to do those straight away, but yeah, we're not we're not done with the terrible Tyranid collection yet. We're almost there, but but not quite. 